Most people in life are looking for how do I make a life worth living in return with having. When I sit in the early morning hours waiting outside a strip mall where I tend to shop and purchase my breakfast, I'm always amazed at the number of people that play through the parking lot and pass by. I'm also amazed at how early some employees come in to their businesses where they're employed. I was really surprised to discover that sometimes Dollar Tree employees are there at 4 in the morning. That's pretty amazing to me. It probably means that they get their day done by, gosh, mid-noon or something like that because that's a long day. And truthfully, we have to worry about what people think of what is our safety, not at all. What we know in America is that we're all supposed to have the safety and sanctity of our own bodies. And it shouldn't have to become a Marx's Law at all. Because the truth is that our United States Constitution, as well as our international treaties that I talk about all the time, protect our lives. But what really protects our human body is the Fourth Amendment. What also protects our bodies is an international treaty that seems to be amended. You see, what that whole purpose of going overseas was, was to try to get rid of the atrocities that had happened during the World War II. It's also very clear that the women who were pushing for that treaty to be put in place, that human rights declaration, were very concerned about what was happening to other women around the world. Now, not being a girl, I can't speak to that, but I have plenty of siblings that are female that I could be concerned with. We live in a world where people are pretending to be things they're not. We live in a world where people have more skill sets than they want to tell people. You see, if they can play in the shadows and they can do things immorally and illegally, and if they can sleep all day and then get up at night and go harm people, they'll do that. There are plenty of players that sleep during the day on campus and then wake up and go in with their maintenance buddies who are the townies of our communities and get inside people's homes, apartments, and other types of, well, buildings that serve our communities. Their friends let them in because they run into them at the in the morning at McDonald's or some other breakfast shop. They start talking, they start associating, and then they've got their little team. They've got their little team that's on the scene, and then sometimes they even walk them into a job after they've been around enough, that people have seen them enough, that they think, okay, you've got a friend, we'll hire him. Not always wise. If you don't do a background check on someone, that doesn't matter. Maybe they kept their nose clean, even though they're partiers, they're potheads, they're druggies, and you just don't know it. Maybe you didn't give them a drug test to check them over. That was foolish. I definitely know in manufacturing from having worked there that we had to have drug tests. I didn't really like it because I didn't do any drugs, but today we've got people who like to play with food. We got people who like to ruin food. We have people who give you bad food. Now, a part of my ministry is picking up food that is just slightly timed out, meaning it just expired at the end of the day. A lot of companies produce a lot of bread to serve their customers, and they throw it away. If it's brand new food that's not been used, they might put it in the freezer and use it another day. If it's food that's still edible, they might do that based on any type of sanitation laws or food preparation laws or safe serve laws and certifications. But what I know about people's plate food is that that food could actually be separated out and not fill our landfills in a problem, if you will. You see, landfills are full of rats, mites, bugs, cockroaches, and whatnot. And if we're trying to eradicate that problem, then what we might do with food that's off a plate is take it home and, sure, give it to a dog or cat or some sort of pig we might have in the backyard if we're doing pig farming today. But it also could be collected by those restaurants and separated out so it doesn't make an obliterated mess between napkins and sauces and all sorts of things that cause harm to our environment. You see, we can even use the roughage that comes off a table to help a garden to be stronger, to be better. Cracked eggs are often used in gardens. Coffee grinds are often used too. And so why wouldn't we do that as restaurants? It's not really that much harder for an employee to do that. It's really just a lack of training, a lack of procedure, a lack of policy, and frankly, not a lack of time. A lot of employees will always say, I don't have time to do that. That's not true. You have time to do what an employer pays you to do. A lot of people wait a long time to be served by a restauranteur or what we call a waitress or server because they're busy serving other people. That's sometimes due to understaffing. That's sometimes due to over policing. And sometimes it's just because employees want to make more money. So they low staff so that they're the ones who gain and earn the most when they're on the duty. And that's not wrong. It just makes a lot of people wait today. 
What we're talking about today is how marvelous people are today. Here comes my family friend. I'll just quickly show you how they often find me. And they've already found me three times today. But they're expecting me to help them with food because they know that I'm a loving pagan who does that. And when I'm in a good mood and when I can. In life, we're talking about the reality of life. And my little family who's right here. Once again, I'll show you. That's George. That's Fred. And that's his sisters instead. But what we're talking about is that we have people who love on animals. And when you love on animals, you take the food from your table, you separate it out, and you feed the animals that are feeding us.